When crisis strikes, some people can get quickly overwhelmed by the enormity of the tasks ahead. And this is really common when there's a high degree of uncertainty in terms of the outcome. And there's a lot of unknowns associated with this crisis, which is typical in the times that we are in now. And that then for some people sends your emotional part of your brain into overdrive. You go into this fight, flight, freeze or defensive rage response. Your amygdala is on overdrive, which is the most, uh, the reptilian part of our brain, the oldest part of our brain. And it's the one that takes over when we feel we are, uh, there is a threat. And there is a threat. Uh, when we're in a crisis. There's a threat to our current status quo. There may be a threat to your ego in terms of how you uh, expect yourself to perform in such a crisis. You may not feel you have the right tools, techniques or skills available to you to perform uh, in the role that someone may have put you in. And there may also be a threat to the current status quo that you are used to. So it's quite uh, expected when you are in a crisis for you to feel this need to go into emotional overdrive and the question is how can you avoid doing that how can you avoid losing sight of your best self and we know from scientific studies that when our brain does go into a shock response it's really difficult for ourselves to perform it's really difficult for ourselves to stay focused as our high activity increases in our amygdala in the emotional parts of our brain it kind of takes the front frontal lobes the executive function of our brain offline so it can do the freeze so it can do the flight so it can do the defensive rage and some people do have all of those emotional responses when it's a crisis some people get really angry, some people uh, want to freeze, they just don't know what to do and some people just want to run away from the situation and that is quite normal, that is people's default response to certain crises. And so we want to take the time really to learn how can we take back control of our mindset, how can we calm down our amygdala? How can we make sure that we are able to bring our thinking brain, our logical part of our brain, back online so we can make the decisions necessary that move us forward in a crisis, that make us take the steps that will help us not only in the short term but in the long term as well. So my name is Dr Ruth Mary Allen. I'm a certified brain health and high performance coach and havening techniques practitioner. I'm also a reservist British Army officer and for the last 25 years I've been helping train leaders build their emotional and their mental resilience to be better prepared for going on operations through the format of adventurous training that we do in the British Army. And I'm going to draw some, from some of my experience in that context as to how you can avoid losing sight of your best self in a crisis. Back in 2008, I was invited as a military mountain leader to support an expedition overseas. And we were camping in a campsite right next to a river that was dam released. And there'd been an awful lot of rain uh, over the last few days as we were training and getting ready to go on our expedition into the mountains. And that night there was a huge almost earthquake and the, and the, and the ground really shook uh, underneath our tent and I just knew there was something that wasn't right. The, the, the stream that was previously a trickle went into a massive flow and shortly after me getting out of uh, my tent knowing that I needed to flee, knowing that something definitely wasn't right, something definitely was going to happen very soon. The emergency services came down from the village to say that we had to evacuate immediately because there had been a major rockfall upstream and it was going to threaten 
the campsite and within 30 minutes we evacuated the whole campsite. My role in that was to act as the liaison individual, liaison officer if you will, to help in the translation of what the emergency services needed to do and what they wanted the people in the village to do because I was one of the few people that could speak German so I acted, acted as the translator and in fact we were evacuated to an underground bunker within a hospital to take us away from the risk area where the rockfall had taken away from the campsite and make us safe. And it was really important in that time that I took the time to focus on how I could show up as my best self, not only to help myself, but to obviously help all the people that were being evacuated. And so I'm going to draw on the three simple steps that you can take in order to help you stay in charge of your best self, help you bring your brain back online. So the first thing is, is to acknowledge the uncomfortable emotions that you may be experiencing as a result of a crisis that you may be thrown into. It's okay to not feel okay. It's okay to have negative emotions. It's okay to feel scared. It's okay to feel tense, to feel nervous, to want to flee. That is okay. Be okay with those emotions. Embrace them and give them a really good hug to acknowledge I'm okay with those emotions and that's just natural response. That's the first thing. Write down all the emotions you are feeling and be okay with those emotions. The second thing is to focus on breathing. If we are reflecting on from a, a kayaking uh, approach, if we capsize in our boat and we go underwater, one of the first things we say to people when they capsize and they come to the surface is to shout capsize. And that's not just to alert people that they've gone in the water, but that's also to activate their breathing because they go into shock because of the cold water and it helps you activate your normal breathing process and helps calm you down. So the second step you need to take is to take a nice deep breath Breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four, and hold for four. This is called box breathing. So breathe in for four, hold for four, and then as you're breathing out, just try and imagine just breathing out all of those unhelpful emotions that are coming into your mind. And do this until such time that you feel that you have calmed yourself down a little bit. And then the third thing that you need to do is focus on how you want to show up as your best self in this particular crisis. What three words would you describe or would you use to describe for yourself that would make you be that person that you want to be, be the best person you want to be in that crisis? And one of those words might be calm. Calm, focused and intentional could be your three words and that's certainly what I sought to be when I was acting as that liaison officer in the crisis that I was supporting and in fact the next day after we were when we returned back to the campsite it turned out that my tent was actually right in the middle of the path and five million tons of rock and hundreds and hundreds of trees wiped through the campsite and wiped out many people's tents. Fortunately I was able to get my tent packed away and into safe ground um, and we were able to continue on with our expedition. So it's really important that if you are thrown into a crisis, if you want to make sure you don't lose sight of your best self, that you focus on those three things, acknowledge the emotions that you're having and that they're uncomfortable and it's okay to feel uncomfortable. Second is to focus on your breathing, re-engage your breathing, that will calm down your overactive emotional centres of your brain and help you bring back the logical part of your brain back online. You can also use self-havening to do that too. Please visit one of my videos to look at that. And then thirdly is to decide how you want to show up 
in that situation, what emotional words define the very best of you in that particular crisis so that you can focus on moving forward positively and generating those emotions so that outwardly you can really be effective in the crisis that you're responding to. I hope this serves you. If you found this really helpful, please post below. If you are really struggling with your response to a crisis, perhaps it's been triggered by past crises and that is common to the the less you are able to control your amygdala in previous crises, the more vulnerable you become to dealing with future ones, then do make sure you reach out for help. If you'd like to learn more about how I can help you unchain your pain, unlock the secrets to greater mental clarity and performance, and unleash your potential, then make sure you register for your free Unleash Strategy call. I look forward to talking to you soon.